Hi, welcome to this video brought to you by Maths from Scratch. This is column method multiplying level four. Now what's different in this level is that we are dealing with what happens when we multiply numbers by a two digit number. Now from the previous levels, what we did is we multiplied numbers by a single digit. Level four is now gonna explain how we now multiply numbers by a two digit number. So as you can see from example one, we've got 13 times 12, okay? and so we're gonna be multiplying by a two digit number and level four is gonna be explaining how we do that. So let's have a look at example number one. So we've got two two digit numbers here that we're gonna to multiply together. We've got a 13 and we've got a 12. So we're gonna set this up like any other column method by lining up these two numbers in terms of place value. So a 13 and a 12 underneath. And I should say it doesn't matter if you did 12 times 13 because multiplication works both ways. Okay, that's something for you to remember. So 13 times 12 written on top of one another, lined up in terms of place value. We're just going to put a little multiplication sign so we know it's a times. And for now, we're just going to put one line underneath. Now what you'll see there is I've actually written out the method again another two times. Because this method can get quite fruity. Now, the beautiful thing about this method is that you only ever need to know your times tables up to nine times nine. But the complicated thing is knowing which numbers to multiply and in which order. Because all you're ever going to do is do lots and lots of simple little times questions. So you can do 2 times 3, 2 times 1, 1 times 3. But it's the order in which you do those little simple calculations that's important. And so that's why I've drawn the method out another two times. Just so you can see in which order we times those little numbers together. So we've got two methods. And so what you do is you start with the 2 okay, in the units column and you multiply upwards, okay? So obviously two times three will become six. And once you've done that, you then start with the two again and you multiply diagonally. So then the calculation that you do there, the simple calculation that you do is two times one, okay? And so that gives me an answer of two. And then the second thing that we do, or the third thing rather, is that we need to add a zero underneath that six. And the reason why, and I will do a video in depth on this, but the reason why, very briefly, is that we're now going to move on to this one. Now, obviously, this it's not a one, it's a 10, okay, in the 12s. And so technically, what you're doing, when you do one times three, which is the, the next stage, is you're actually going to do 10 times three, okay? And that's why we need to draw the zero there, okay? So one times three becomes a three, okay? And so that automatically makes that a 30, which is why it works. And then the second stage of that second bit, there's lots of seconds, is you do one times one. Okay, so then that gives me one. Now you can draw a second line underneath there because now what we're gonna do, the next stage after this, is now we're going to add these two numbers together, these two red numbers. So six add zero becomes six, two add three becomes a five, then that one with that nothing there just becomes one. So the answer to 13 times 12 is 156. So as you can see, this could get quite complicated if you're not paying attention or you just forget what to do. So again, just to summarize, start on the two, multiply upwards to make a six, then you do two times one, so we move diagonally across, and then that gives you your answer for the first line. Then we're gonna move on to the second row here. Okay, so we do one times, add your zero first, then we're gonna do one times three, which is three, and then we're gonna do one times one, which is one, and write that there, okay, so you're moving across. Then that gives me an answer as 156. Okay, so look at example number two. So very similar to example number one, but this time we're going to do 15 times 11. So at first stage, write out your method. So 15 over 11, time sign, draw your line. So we've lined those up in terms of place value. Then we remember the first step is we start on the one on the second row and we multiply upwards. So one times five gives me a five. And then we multiply across from that one. So we multiply diagonally. One times one gives me one. And then, oh, it's, in, it's not in blue, it's not in red, but it's fine. I'm sure I'll live with it. Um, right, add a zero, okay, as we move on to the second row. And then we're going to start with the second one. So one times five gives me five. Then multiply upwards and one times one gives me another one, okay? And then we draw the line. And then as per example number one, we're going to add these two numbers up now. So five add nothing is five, one add five is six, then one on its own is just one. So the answer to that one is 165. So literally, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, as long as you follow this pattern upwards and across, then move, move along upwards and across, you should be okay. This is the key to kind of help you, to help you learn this method, that algorithm or that process.
Right, let's have a look at a third example. This time we're going to do 13 times 23. I think it's always good to see as many examples as we possibly can. Write them out in terms of place value. Draw my line, okay? Now we're going to follow this pattern again. So we're going to do 3 times 3, which gives me a 9. Then 3 times 1, so diagonally, that gives me a 3. Then we're going to add our 0, because we're moving on to the second line. Now we're moving on to this 2. So 2 times 3 gives me an answer of 6. And then multiply upwards, 2 times 1 gives me an answer of 2. And then all we're going to do now is add these two numbers up, okay? So the two red numbers, so 9 add nothing is nothing, 3 add 6 is 9, and then 2. So the answer to that one is 299. Right, so then if we move on to our last example, so example number 4, okay, so we've got 12 times 43, again we're going to line these up in terms of place value, so 12 times 43, time sign, and then a little line, okay, then following the pattern with our nice other methods that we've written down, so 3, we're going to multiply upwards, so we should by now know what this pattern is, so 3 times 2, so that's going to give me an answer of 6, then we're going to move across and move diagonally, so that becomes 3 times 1, which is three. So you can really see it's just a mixture of simple little times tables. Add your zero, okay? Loads of people forget that, so you've got to be really careful that you remember to put that in. Then we're going to start with the four then now, aren't we? So it's going to be four times two, which gives me an eight. And then we're going to multiply upwards again. So four times one gives me a four. And then, like all the others, we're going to add these two red numbers together, okay? So six add nothing is six. Now, 3 add 8, well, again, that gives me 11, so we need to carry that 1 there, very similar to column method addition. Well, it is column method addition, so if you're a bit rusty on that, feel free to watch that playlist. And then 4 add 1, that gives me a 5. So if the answer to 12 lots of 53 is 516. So like always, here are some uh, quick questions for you to have a go at. Watch the accompanying walkthrough video to check through your answers, see if you've got them right, and then I'll see you in level 4.